Jeremiah chapter 1, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah is a prophet, Old Testament prophet. They're called major prophets and minor prophets, uh, not because one of them is more important than the other, but Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, these are large prophetic books. We call them the major prophets because of the size of the prophetic literature. Then you go to the smaller ones, okay? You got Nahum, Habakkuk, Obadiah. Some of them are a page long. We call them the minor prophets. This right here is a very popular passage of Scripture, but instead of just quoting it, I'm going to break it down. Somebody say break it down, all right? Do y'all have any amens left in you? I need some talk back today, okay. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you, look, formed, sanctified, and ordained before I got here. Before I ever showed up on the birthing table. One of the greatest debates in our country is when does life begin? And all of them's wrong. Republicans and Democrats. It begins in heaven. You didn't show up here because your mom had a one night stand and didn't even like the guy and you feel like you have no purpose because let me tell you something, you didn't show up and God said, oh, I got to get something going for this gal. She ain't got nothing going for her. <laughs> Life did not begin with that. Life began in heaven. And it really don't matter how you got into the earth. It matters that you're here. Some of us get hung up on why, how we got here. Doesn't matter how you got here. The fact is life began in heaven and God had to get you here. Okay. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. I'm going to, tell, I'm going to really hone in on several of these words right here. When you talk about assignment, you have to go through, you have to go through the introspection of where am I different? Where am I different? Okay. I am not mad at my eyes because they don't hear. I am not put out with my ears because they don't see. I have a writing pen over here that I scratch notes on a post-it note, and my pen cannot do what my glasses do. And I'm not mad at it. My glasses cannot do what my pen does. I am not upset that I went to In-N-Out Burger and they didn't serve lobster. I didn't get mad at the steakhouse because there were no enchiladas on the menu. And success and assignment comes with the realization not of where you blend, but where you're different. And let me tell you something. God does not need anybody else's permission for you to embrace your difference. And some of you are waiting for other people to embrace it, and God's waiting for you to embrace it yourself. Because if all you have is heaven's agreement, you got all the agreement you need. Before I formed you, formed, actually in the Hebrew there, is derived from the process of the potter and the clay. We are made out of the dust of the earth. So God said, before I put you in earth's wheel and spin you and started making you a body, before the male and the female came together biologically. So before you ever had a body, he said, I knew you. The word know, catch this, this is where, it's, it's where this gets a little deep, means to know by experience. 
Not by, there's knowledge by knowledge, and then there's knowledge by experience. Okay? I can stand up here and hold an orange and say it's citrusy, it's sweet, it's acidic, and I can give you a knowledge of it, but until you taste it, the tasting is a whole different thing than me telling you. God said, I didn't tell you about it. I experienced it. So before I put you in the earth in a body, I already knew you by experience. The Bible does not go in depth on this subject. I will give you more scriptures of what it says, but there's only about four. I had some type of heavenly existence before I showed up in the earth. This is Ron Carpenter. This is not the Bible. I will always tell you the difference between the two. I believe I existed in heaven and I had the kingdom. Because every time Jesus speaks of the kingdom, he speaks as something that's been lost. How can I lose something that was never mine? He says the kingdom is a lost coin. The kingdom is the son that was lost. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. The, the, the king, he's always speaking of the kingdom and something that we formerly had, but we lost. So we had it in heaven, but when we entered the earth, it was lost. Jesus brought it back to earth. My kingdom come and my will be done in the earth as it was in heaven. So when I got here and God formed me, I got here with something missing, okay? The kingdom is the Holy Spirit coming and living on the inside of me, God taking residence in me, and then me being able and empowered to live out the principles of heaven in the earth. I had that in heaven, but Adam ate from a tree. The tree infected the mind. It was a tree full of knowledge. So when I entered the earth realm and God formed me, I didn't know what I knew there. If, if I said I lost my wallet, my wallet can't be lost if it wasn't mine. My wallet couldn't be lost if I didn't formally possess it. If I said I lost my phone, the phone had to be in my possession to the, the presupposition is it was in my possession. That's the only way it could be lost. So when Jesus speaks of the kingdom, always in terms of it being something that got lost, then he's saying, I got to bring you back into the earth what you enjoyed when you were in heaven because I knew you in heaven. Woo, hallelujah. He said, I experienced you in heaven. There is a difference, stay with me, between when you were created and when you were made. Am I going too different, too, too hard, or can I stay? There's a difference between you when you were created and when you were made. Okay? Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 4, I think, throw that on the screen. Made means formed. The potter's wheel, the clay. I gave you a body. So God made you, okay? But there's a difference between that and being created. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual... How do you read these scriptures and not unpack them? Uh, no. <laughs> yes, sir. That right there, I could preach three months on that. According to that verse right there, you don't have any needs. Well, Pastor, you ain't been to my house. <laughs> According to that scripture, you have no needs. They're just in a different dimension. That's why Jesus went to heaven and sat down. There's nothing left to be done. Everything that you need is already yours. It's just in another realm. You are preaching, Pastor. You've been out there doing missionary work and God done jumped on you. You are preaching, Pastor. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Where? In heavenly places. In Christ. Next verse. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. 
That's one of these verses. Before I gave you a body, I had already created you. Before I gave you a body, I had already experienced you. In heaven, you had the kingdom. In the earth, you lost it, and I brought it back so you could live it out in the earth like you did in heaven. Your life was not a random series of events and dead ends and train wrecks. But before you ever got into the earth, I had an ordination. I had a plan. Life began in heaven. It did not begin with your mother and father. And I've got something going on for you. basically one thing because you are trying to do things right there are people that hate you just for trying to do the right thing when new doors open it is possible that an enemy will present itself into your path in this new series enemies ron carpenter will show you exactly why this is happening and what to do about it we are fighting a new battle you've got haters you've got liars and all of them coming against you rejoice and be glad because there's a great and effective door awaiting me and there are many you will outlive this devil. You will overcome this devil. And in the name of Jesus, you will open a door. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. You know what? I want to bless you and just hang on right here just one second with me because I want to tell you how we're going to do that. But first of all, let me thank you. We're going to get back to the Word in just a moment, but I'm so glad we have this time with you. I'm so grateful for this message uh, that God really just downloaded a lot of stuff called On Assignment. And you know what? Everything changes when you begin to get up every morning and live life with a sense of assignment that it's not about paychecks and jobs and atmospheres and companies, that it's much more about people and the people that God is having you cross paths with and you never know the person that God has sent for you to bless and to bless you that has nothing to do with actually what you're doing. There's all types of reasons God may place you in an environment. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about living life with a sense of assignment, knowing that there's a plan and you're not just getting up today and doing what you do. Uh, I'm so excited about it. I hope you're enjoying these messages. And not only that, I just want to thank those uh, who have been helping us so much. We have a covenant partnership. Pastor Ron, how do you do what you do? Well, we don't show advertisements. Uh, we don't sell commercial time. We are viewer and we are listener supported. We are counting on the fact that people love the gospel of Jesus Christ, love his word, and want as many people to hear it as they can. And I know I want to share the gospel of Jesus and have people saved. And I know I want to take the word and disciple people. And I have given my entire adult life since I was 18 years old to accomplishing that purpose. How are we supported? By people saying, I want to be a part of that. And I want to be a part of that every month. Would you join that? Thank you to those of you that do, who've been with us over the years and gotten us where we are but also to those of you who say, you know what, I've been receiving from this, but I've never given to it, or maybe you've never given to a ministry at all. Uh, let me tell you something. When you begin to give, and when you begin especially to give sacrificially, you begin to open windows into your life when God can bless you through a myriad of ways and not just a paycheck. I would ask you right now, would you consider prayerfully asking God what he would have you to do? And whether this be a one-time gift or whether it be a monthly gift where you say, I'm going to do 100 a month, 200 a month, I'm going to do 50 a month, wherever you are in your financial life, whatever God is speaking, we're going to send you this, this gift from us back to you, just to say thank you for partnering with us. We need partners to do what we do because we are better together. 
And so I want to thank those of you all over America and the world that are listening now and to invite, invite you into this wonderful family of covenant partners here at Ron Carpenter Television. Now, without any further ado, let's get back to the Word. Before you were born, the word born is a weird word. It means wound. So before I put you on the potter's wheel and made you a body of clay, I had already experienced you. You were chosen in Christ before the foundations of the world. So God had already put his hand on you, marked you, and set you aside before you showed up. Okay? Now he said, before I wound you, before I took the clay and put it in a wound. Okay? Listen to what he says right here. Before I wound you, he said, then I sanctified you. In the Bible, the word sanctify means to become holy. Church people have made holiness as getting everything right. You're just a holy roller. Holy does not mean getting everything right. If we could get everything right, we wouldn't need Jesus. Amen. The word holy means separate and other. So, I'm going back. I'm building this thing because you've got to get it for me to do the whole rest of the the, the teaching. Before I put you on the potter's wheel, I already had experiences with you. You had the kingdom. You were chosen in Christ before I ever said, let there be light. Before I put the clay in the womb so it could incubate and be fruitful. Okay? Before I ever did that, I already ordained you and sanctified you. Which means... I put you in a place where you need to embrace your otherness and your separateness. That is hard to do because most people can't pay the price of being other. The price of being other means alone. And most people will compromise their other to have friends. Because one of the greatest needs in a human is to be accepted. But to be accepted, you have to become like the group you want to be accepted by. That's the only way they accept you. And you compromise your otherness. And you compromise your separateness. I think I'm a really likable guy. But I don't have a lot of friends. Why? Because they know I'm different. I can't tell you how many conferences I go to. Listen, I'm not, this ain't a sad story. I'm just telling you. This is the story of my life. I can't tell you how many conferences I go to and there's eight speakers and seven of them stay at the whole, same hotel and they put me in one across town by myself. <laughs> because they know. So you know what? It used to hurt my feelings. Now I say it's a compliment. Because they recognize I'm not like the other seven guys. I'm different than the other seven guys. If he comes, something different is going to happen than the other seven guys. So I have learned in time. I didn't say I learned it early, but I've learned in time to embrace that. But sometimes that is the trade-off. The trade-off is many times you have, to, you have to compromise what God did that made you so different in order to be accepted by the community you want to be in. But God said, ye are the salt of the earth. And he said, the salt that loses its saltiness is only good for the dung heap. Do I need to tell you what dung is? That's what Jesus said. That's written in red. He, God said, if I put you in the Silicon Valley and I sprinkle you and you're not different enough from it to affect it, you are no good to me. He said, if you go there and become it, 
He said, I didn't reach over here and bring you here for you to become it. I reached over here because I want you to be different from all of it and raise up a people that have been screaming and praying for something different from years. And God said, when you embrace what I've called you to embrace, others are going to hear the call to come up and be a church that says, we don't really care what everybody else thinks about us. We're going to praise like crazy. We're going to worship like crazy. We're going to give like crazy. We're going to serve like crazy. We love our God and we love God's people. People, somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Ephesians 2.10, I'll quit on this one. For we are his workmanship, born in the earth, but created in Christ Jesus. Difference between when you were made and when you were created. Created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. I'm going to get to that later. That's the assignment part. Which God prepared beforehand. When did he prepare the good works? Before you got here. That you should walk in them. We think that we pray to get God to move. And when I hear that terminology, I want to pull what thin hair I have in my head out. <laughs> I think I shared this here. I don't know where I've shared all my stories before. I was invited one time to a prophetic conference to speak. There were like 12 prophets. My, my dominant gift is not prophet. I don't know why I was invited. Here again, they stay at one hotel and I'm across town over here. I don't know why I was there but I was invited to this prophetic conference to speak. And those guys got up one session after another that day. And if I heard this one time, I heard it 1,500 times that day. God is about to. God is about to. God is about to. God is going to. God is getting ready to. God is this. And God's moving that. And God's shifting this. And God. And I heard that thing all day. So it came, my, I was the night speaker. I got my mic that night. And I said, first of all, God's not about to do anything. By the way, I didn't get invited back. <laughs> I said, he's finished. Amen. Jesus said, it is. And he went to heaven and he. And your hysteria is not going to get him up. Because you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. That's why he sat down. Praying is not getting God to do something. Praying is moving something from one dimension to another dimension. God has already done everything he's going to do. Now, I know this don't sound deep, but this will change the whole, your whole way of approaching God. This is what is happening when life is moving. It's not that God finally got up out of his laziness and did something for you. It's that God had already laid out your days before you showed up. So you might be about to move into your next day. You might be about to move into the next anointing he has. You might be about to awaken gifts that he's already put in you that have never been awakened. You might be about to open a door that God's had sitting there for 30 years, but you've never opened it. You might be going into a next season, but the season was there before you got there. Come on, somebody. By the time the stars got there, everything was already in the heavens to support them. Before the vegetation came out of the ground, everything was there. There to support it. Before the cattle was there, there was vegetation to support the cattle. And by the time you got here, everything was here waiting on you when you got here. There's nothing that God needs to do for you to fulfill purpose and assignment in the earth. It's been waiting on you the whole time. All you got to do is work in it. I wish somebody take a step. It's waiting on me. God prepared my days. God prepared my steps. And I'm stepping out of the last and stepping into the next. God, I don't need you to move you. I need you to move me. Hallelujah. Somebody clap and give God praise. Before we go, would you stay with me just one moment? Because Jesus met a woman at the well. A woman who 
had been through many relationships, many marriages, who obviously had some deficits and some deficiencies in her life. I call it a hole in your bucket. You keep pouring water into it, but there's holes in it, and you, you can't ever hold love, you can't ever hold confidence, can't ever hold security, can't ever hold faith that just runs straight through you. Jesus met this woman and said, I can give you living water. And if you drink the water that I have, you will never thirst again. He was talking about himself. He was talking about salvation. I offer that to you. Do you have a hole in your bucket? And no matter what you do, how many times you do it, successes you have, money you make, or relationships you go through, nothing satisfies. That's because nothing external can ever fill internal voids. You have a God-sized hole on the inside of you, and only God can fill that hole. I offer him to you now. Would you pray this prayer with me? Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died and rose again on the third day for my salvation. Would you wash me of my sins? Come and live in my heart. I put my faith in you. Be my Lord and Savior from this day forward, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Call in, write in, email us, let us know. Write us a letter, do whatever you gotta do. We celebrate this decision you made and we wanna know and help walk it out with you. I just want to say we're so glad for these time, this little bit of time we've had together, and we hope to see you again real soon. Until then, God bless you. God said when they lie on you and they've made a target out of you and they hate you for basically one thing, because you are trying to do things right. There are people that hate you just for trying to do the right thing. When new doors open, it is possible that an enemy will present itself into your path. In this new series, Enemies, Ron Carpenter will show you exactly why this is happening and what to do about it. We are fighting a new battle. You've got haters, you've got liars, and all of them coming against you. Rejoice and be glad, because there's a great and effective door awaiting me, and there are many adversaries. You will outlive this devil, you will overcome this devil, and in the name of Jesus, you will open a door. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.